Hello everyone, my name is Rollins and thank you so much for watching my channel. A channel talks about investing in the stock market and also talks about financial independence. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing, like and also hit the bell notification. Whenever I release another content, you'll be able to be notified. Last month, if you followed the Nairobi Securities Exchange, you're aware that all the banks release their results. Most of them, actually all of them, uh, they reported reduced earnings, different, others 50, others 70, others 30 percent. But to me, what caught my attention was one bank, and it's the bank that I'm going to be talking about, and the bank is Cooperative Bank. Today, I'm going to be talk to, uh, briefly talk about it. I'm going to be also going through the, its financials, and at the end of the day, give my reasons why it got my attention my attention and also continued loving it. So let's go directly to its overview as we continue with the bank. So in brief, Cooperative Bank of Kenya is a commercial bank in the largest economy of East Africa and it is licensed by Commercial Bank of Kenya which is actually national banking regulator. The bank uh, has introduced uh, agent banking model if you're in East Africa or Uganda you know what the agent banking model if you have an account you can transact uh, without necessarily going to the bank because they have agents even in rural areas which is a good way of um, attracting customers and also it has a deep customer base in Kenya with over 7.5 million accounts as of 2018 as of now in 2021 I believe the accounts have increased so if we go to another overview is the bank serves the bank needs of individuals, small business and larger corporations focusing on the needs of cooperative societies in Kenya. Actually, this bank is owned by cooperative banks, majorly as, as we go in the shareholder profile. So cooperative bank is large financial services institution, actually is the fourth largest institution after equity, KCB, and NCBA. So you can see it also has um, some kind of uh, multi or competitive advantage when compared to the rest of the other banks that are in Kenya. So its total assets were valued at 3.5 US dollars billions, which is around 404 billion Kenyan shillings. And as of 31st December 2013, its shareholder equity was valued at approximately uh, US dollars 425. Uh, 30 million. Actually, as I talk now, it has increased up to 90 billion Kenyan shillings. So, as of uh, 2012, the bank controlled about 8% of the all bank assets in Kenya. So, now they have increased actually to more than 10%, which is uh, a positive. So, uh, in history, you can read through uh, because this is a short uh, video, so we shall not go through all this. Maybe the uh, another thing is to know is you need to know the key people, uh, but mainly the CEO Gideon Muryuki. The most important to note about this uh, CEO and the managing director Gideon Muryuki is he owns over three percent of the company. This means it's a positive ranking because the people, if the workers are invested in the company, it means they believe in the company long run, which is a positive note. So if you go to the products. I mainly it's loans, checking, savings, investments, debit cards, and also actually it's a forex broker through its uh, companies, as you see. So these are the companies, other companies that the uh, cooperative bank owns. One is Kingdom Securities Limited. This is actually a brokerage company. So if you're interested in banking, I mean, if you're interested in buying shares and selling shares, Kingdom Securities is the best because it also has online banking online uh, platform which you can use so if you for example if you're interested in buying cooperative bank you should be using Co kingdom securities so that you can support your own bank so another a member uh, company it owns the uh, Cop, Cop trust investment services limited uh, cooperative consultant services cic insurance company it owns 35 percent actually this is the largest money market fund uh, in Kenya, which is a good good company. So also it owns Cooperative Bank in Southern Sudan, Cooperative Bank Foundation, 
also it's in the plan of owning cooperative bank in Ethiopia also cooperative bank in Uganda so if you recently if you follow a uh, cooperative bank it recently acquired Jamibora bank Nairobi but it's not a big bank but also it's it's a good step towards uh, banking so if you go to ownership structure as i said uh it's owned by cooperative banks i mean cooperative societies in kenya uh which you call chama i think in a... <laughs> so so if you see the ownership structure mainly it's owned by cooperatives in kenya which own 65% and over other more than uh 160000 other investors which i inclusive as i said i own a uh, cooperative bank so mainly uh this is a uh, the brief introduction about the bank so let's go to its financials which is one of the most important things before you invest that you should check so from the this is actually the one that i extracted from the reports uh from 2016 until uh 2020 mainly i i normally look at four years or five years back because this one gives on average the true representation of all the financials because if you look at one year or two years that one that picture is not a good enough if you're looking to buy a bank actually mainly most of the people they go ahead and look for 10 years back but for me i prefer five to four years because this one is a fair picture of uh, a company performance so if you can see from the cash you know the cash has been not reducing not increasing which is good uh, so the balance uh, this one also you can see it on reduced in 2020 because of the reasons which we all know because of the pandemic if you see uh, government securities Kenya government securities you can see the securities have been increasing uh, because if you see actually it increased also in, in 2020 because uh, it was too risky so most of the money they invested in government securities so this is this is good this is actually one of the safest way of how you can invest uh, okay if you see the comprehensive income also all the figures have been going up so you can look all the figures and also another thing is um deposits also have been going up which is good so if you also see runs the runs because actually runs if the, that is one of the biggest ways of how the banks earn money it's through running ma, running money to customers so that they can get the interests and also the commissions so you can see also it has also been going up which was also a positive thing so if you see one of the also the most important thing is the assets if you check the assets you can see it has also been on uptrend which is a very very positive thing um so if you can also so the customer deposits is also on positive why is the customer deposits very important actually when you deposit your bank the bank will use it to run to other people so it's a one way of how the bank makes money the more deposits it gets the more capital it has to lend to the people so that's why most of the time actually i don't advise people to deposit their money in the bank instead they should put it like in um money market funds also also buying treasury bills because there they would be getting an interest instead of putting it in the bank they will also be charging actually charge monthly fee instead you just put it in the money market funds and also treasury bills and bonds to get an interest so if you see what is also worrying actually one of the thing that is worrying about um cooperative bank is this you can see also the um, bond funds have been increasing not that much apart from this 2020 as we all know most of the banks actually they gotten they got uh runs because of the to maintain their cash flow to maintain their customers as most of the customers they withdraw their money and also they did not uh run much money so the banks had to borrow to stay afloat so that's why i think it increased but 
uh, so far you can see it has been on uptrend let's see next in the next years if they will reduce if it continues going up then it should be something to worry about so that's one one thing that maybe that is a bit worrisome but if you go to um, shareholders funds which is uh, the core capital of the shareholders you can see that uh, the holders fund is more than a half to its uh, fund so it's it's still a positive thing if you see that uh, the capital of the shareholders funds is far 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 better than the board funds that's also still very very good so something good to look at so this is uh, about the assets the asset side is looking very great apart from the, of course the the board funds which is able to maintain as you can see the shareholders fund is far 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 better more than the the debt so if we go to the interest income which is one way the way the bank makes money you can see also the interest income i mean the loans and the advances this is the, the amount of money that they get from loans commissions when they borrow i mean when they give you a loan this is the amount of money you can see it has been consistent but slightly going up which is good and also the amount of money like um, the income the interest that they get from the government when they borrow the government money that is the money interest income you can see also the money has been going up which is also a positive thing so if we go to uh, something that uh, maybe is worry worrisome also you just go to the loan another thing to check that is most important thing in the banking is loan loss provisions so you can see actually the bank has been managing uh, between two billion three billion two billion but this one it skyrocketed three times more than before so we know actually most of the people most of the people took loans uh, because of the covid they are going to default so this is the reason why it skyrocketed to 8 billion from 2 billion so actually this is almost three times so it's everyone was affected so this is a we can excuse because we know the problem so but most of the time if you're checking other bankings the other institutions you should always check those provisions if it is always increasing that is a red flag but we know the reasons why uh, the rose run rose prevention increased and the reason why the profits reduced from 14 billion to 10 billion actually it was uh, reduced by 30 percent when you convert it to the percentages which is not uh, very bad compared to other banks so this one gives you a good picture of a good bank that is well managed because of how they managed covid and also how they managed the they are loss they continue making profits so you can see still it's a still good picture another thing that you should always look at is also the profits if the profits is always is going down then that is a red flag at worst the worst still you can find some banks or some companies are making losses if the companies are making losses for the last five years that is a red flag but you can see this one has been consistent which is a very very positive sign the reason why i believe in this bank so if you see the earnings earnings per share you can see it also has been uh, not increasing not going down it has been consistent and also the same which is a very very good sign not excellent but a good sign so you can see another thing because of um, i am a dividend investor one thing i love about this bank is it has consistently paid dividend and the past three years it increased the dividend and the best thing is they did not cut the dividend so this was uh, all about the financials you can go through uh because this is a basically the overview you can look into details uh through this um sheet so that you can check other important things that you feel they will help you to analyze the bank so 
this is um, basically all about cooperative bank so why did this bank catch my attention so one thing is if you remember as i said before all the banks reduced their dividends and actually some banks like um equity like abisa they did not pay the dividends completely so this is a disappointment to the shareholders who believed in these banks but cooperative bank it maintained its commitment by paying one kenyan shillings per share uh, as it has always paid this is a good sign to the investors that the company cares about its shareholders that is one point second as you can see they made profits no matter what they went through and currently actually as i uh, as i record this video it's trading around 12.40 kenyan shrinks which i still believe is undervalued because if you check uh if you check its payment if you divide uh one kenyan shillings by the price 12.40 it gives you around eight percent of the dividend yield which is above the inflation rate in east africa that is a good sign so those were the two reasons strong reasons why i believe in this bank that after even covid this bank is going to do better so those were my real reasons why i believe in this bank and as i always say say please always make your own research because personally i'm not a financial advisor i'm always giving my opinion giving my thoughts so that you can also check if something fits your investment uh, goals you can go ahead and buy company depending on your own appetite and also depending on your research that you've made and you find that it fits your investment goals if you like what i do please don't forget to subscribe share like and also hit the bell notification Whenever I release another video, you'll be able to be notified. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.